Today's topic is my most miserable Warhammer experience. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to Waypan. I'm Cal. And I'm Sunny. First, there was hand sculpted minis, then came injection molding, then 3D printing, and now computer printed sprues, and finally computer pre painted minis. You may be asking yourself, what does this have to do with my most miserable Warhammer experience? And we're going to get into that, but we want to to talk about potential solutions and the future of Games Workshop. So, Cal, what was your most miserable Warhammer experience? Recently, it was painting up all of the boarding action terrain. Yeah, and I occasionally helped you out with that. Yeah, and what I want to say is, I don't mean like some of it. No, I mean all of it. Every single kill team set that had the boarding action terrain in it, plus every single expansion that there was. I was doing this as a part of a commission. And we actually calculated how many pieces, two boxes worth of all this boarding action terrain added up to about 356 pieces total. No, 365. Oh, sorry. 365 pieces total. And we would like to also point out that this was done to character level. So it wasn't like done and dirty tabletop quality. It was meant to look a little bit more professional. Yeah. And when we did this project, some of you may look at this experience and go, well, sure, of course you struggled because one, there was 365 pieces and you did them all to professional quality. So of course you would say that. But I think Cal can testify to say that even if you did it at tabletop quality, it would not have been a fun experience. I I don't think you can actually paint this terrain to tabletop quality. Mm. And let me explain. When people think about tabletop quality, what they think about is everything readable. Yeah, which means that every element on the piece is painted, at least base painted, and then you throw on a wash or dry brush over top. So I would invite you guys to take a look at some of these images and the thing that you may notice is the amount of detail on these pieces. And that's why I say you can't do it to tabletop level. Because if you make everything readable, I feel that it is actually character level because of how much detail there is on the piece. I would agree with you on that because there are details within details which forces a hobbyist to actually paint more than necessary. When we came to this project, we were extremely optimistic. We had two styles of paint jobs in mind. One was the old and rusted and the other was battered. We even had a name for the series. It was going to be called Beige Dystopian Future. However, as we went on, we realized that these base steps were really good. We liked the rust effects. We liked how things turned out. Using masking fluid and dirty down rust really helped us create some wonderful realistic effects. And then using an airbrush with enamel paints helped to make the terrain pieces a lot more durable. And all this was done relatively easily with little to medium level effort. This is part of the reason we were so optimistic. Once we started out, we're like, oh my God, look what we're getting done so quickly. Yeah, and it was such a realistic effect that we thought, okay, we can actually pretty much stop it here. But like you said, once it started getting to the details, things got a lot more frustrating. Doing both YouTube and this project meant, of course, we were going to have a lot of our time taken up as well as a lot of our own household stuff, family stuff, and so on. We have a life, believe it or not. This is where the recording stopped because what happened was we got everything to this very nice stage quite quickly and then we moved on to the details. I got one of the smaller terrain pieces done and I realized that it was the owl drawing problem. The owl drawing problem is where you start out with step one, where you draw the basic shapes, and then step two is the owl is completely done and fleshed out in perfect detail. The reason why this was quite frustrating for us is because we were very excited to do another terrain project because we thought we could get YouTube videos out of it, and we really enjoyed our last terrain project, which was... Dungeons and Lasers. It was relatively easy to complete each architecture piece, like for example, Wooden Cottage or or the turret houses. And for that, it was actually great because we could just take some pictures and create whole tutorials and put them up on the Dungeons and Lasers community page on Facebook. And people loved it. They could follow along. And it also gave us the freedom to come up with more complicated designs. Like with one of them, we did marble flooring. Yes, not only marble flooring, but diamond marble flooring. Yes. And we also pretty much enjoyed the stone castle where we did some realistic moss effects Mm -hmm. with, you know, 
flock and dirty damn moss as well, and it looked so good. Yeah, it did. We were also extremely happy to be helping people, and that's the reason why we canned these videos because we thought, hey, this isn't actually helping people. Yeah. It was just creating more steps, which most people would probably take a look at these videos and say, "I don't have time for that." So finally, this leads us to the future of Games Workshop and the potential solutions. There is a very old film called *The Stepford Wives*. I am not talking about the remake; I am talking about the original. The film culminates in one final climax scene where the wife is replaced. She screams. Why? And they answer because. Who's we can? Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. I would like you to take a look at these images of the boarding action, and I would like you to think: Would you be able to sculpt something like this if you were hand sculpting and using the tools from 30 years ago? The answer is obviously no. So what is Games Workshop doing here? They're showing off. We have been increasing our number of shorts, and one of the shorts that absolutely exploded was on the explanation of detail creep and why it can be a problem. With the exception of a small vocal and sometimes vulgar minority, most people actually agree that detail creep is a problem and it prevents them from painting. We don't look down on people who don't want to participate in the painting aspect of the hobby. In fact, GW categorizes their customers into six aspects: casual players, competitive players, diorama makers, modelers slash converters, lore readers, and finally painters. You may notice that that painter aspect, while it can correlate with some of the other aspects, it's only one six of the base. You can participate in one or all aspects of the hobby, and when it comes to painting, we like to think about it in two ways: people who feel that it is a task. And people who do it because it's their passion. We like to consider both of these demographics when considering solutions. We came up with two different solutions. One is far more radical than the other. One is for them to start considering designing models with the painter in mind. Their set zone mortalis terrain was actually perfect for painters, and this is something that they had done previously. Alternatively, one of the other things that they could have done is make these little alcove parts separate. Having it so that you could paint these parts separately or not include them at all would make it a lot more manageable. How do we know this? Because the doors were separate and they. Were more manageable. Not only that, but it would improve the design. This set of terrain would become a collector's piece for two reasons. One is the people who find painting terrain a task, and two is the people who don't. The people who see it as a task wouldn't add those pieces onto their terrain, and it would still look good. It just wouldn't look as good. All of a sudden, all of those pieces are now available for those people who make dioramas, those people who make conversions. Warhammer can even feature pieces where people make their own terrain using bits from boxes like this, and it stops the key sin of this terrain set, which is repeats. This terrain set is meant to look like it is extremely detailed on every single one, but we notice patterns. We are pattern recognition machines. And with this set repeating over three boxes, things start to look very samey. Getting a bit passionate there, Cal. But yes, keeping the greebles on a separate sprue would be good. All right then, Sunny. Would you like to talk about the other solution we came up with? Yes. So Archon Studios have come up with a new innovation called Prismacast technology that uses UV setting ultraviolet inks that prints the artwork, in this case the paint job, directly onto the sprue. This is meant to be very durable and scratch-proof, and it's Revolutionary. The process begins with the artist hand painting the pieces. Then a 3D scan is taken of the artwork and printed directly onto the sprue. Aside from a small amount of texture, it looks no different from the original. I don't know about you, but this could be a major time saver for the average hobbyist and quite possibly the next big thing in the tabletop gaming scene. People commented with this solution that they like painting. However, when I take a look at it, the thing I thought about was if all of those details were already done, we could do this more extravagant paint job on the exterior and still leave the interior 
painted that way. Yes, so it would actually give you more options and saves you more time. It seems based off the feedback we got from the detail creep short that we did that people would like models with less detail but that they're more elegant, they're easier to paint. Yes, because without that issue, they would have actually started painting or they wouldn't have felt as exhausted just looking at the models and feeling overwhelmed. And the thing is that we've actually gotten a lot of feedback in this direction and we don't think that that short would be doing as well as it is unless people really did feel strongly about this. Exactly. I should point out that there is a vocal minority who likes like this level of detail. However, a lot of them point out one thing. They think that they're paying for this level of detail. Having the detail bits on a separate sprue is still a good idea because you're not paying for any less material. But in this case, you can have it as detailed or as simple as you like. This is also extremely helpful when it comes to conversions. Having a clean base means that you can add a great deal more. One of the other things that was said is some people feel forced into painting or making the models in a certain way. Should we conclude, Sunny? Yes, we shall. So what made me miserable and why is it a problem? So detail creep is making painting a dementing and demoralizing process. So to help solve this, Games Workshop should consider putting greebles in terrain as a separate sprue. And for models, they should have accessories and additional equipment put in a separate sprue as well so people can customize them as they please. Additionally, they should consider Prismacast-like technology so that they can make pre-painted models more available to people who don't want to paint. Having pre-painted minis doesn't mean that you can't customize, but what it does mean is you've got a great base to work off. Well, you know how to make a great base. Oh, I think I do. Keep, Keep those, those brushes, brushes wet. wet. Bye bye. -bye. Uh, Cal? Yeah? I think you, uh, missed a spot with that skull over there. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think that's skull number 162? Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, you gonna get that? Yeah. Stop! Stop! He's already dead inside!